welcome back to Mainly. I hope everyone's having a good day or week. Yeah, I'm having a pretty good week. So let's get started. So today we're going to talk about the internal parts of the reproductive system. So this is the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. But if you don't really know much about the vulva, like the words perineum, introitus, clitoris, urethromyatus, I will link it below. That video happened two weeks ago and that's basically where we started going over the outer bits. Now we're going to talk about the inner bits. So let's get started. Number one is the vagina. So this is the one that we often hear of, that we often refer to because it just makes the most sense. So the vagina is basically a muscular canal that leads to our internal organs. Um, if you remember back or you know what an introitus is, if you feel along that introitus, it's like a, a gate, you go inside that gate, that is your vagina, that is that muscular canal that leads us to the rest of the reproductive system. And everyone's vagina is a different length, but they have found that the average that vagina is 3.6 inches to 9.6 centimeters long. So depending on where you are from in the world, one of those numbers should make sense. <laughs> and one of the things um, that we typically notice about our vagina first is um, our period. So our period blood comes out of our vagina and essentially this is where you're gonna insert your tampon, your menstrual cup, uh, your menstrual sponge, whatever you decide to use to take care of your menstrual cycle. If it is something internal, that is where it's gonna go. And the other thing that you will notice that comes up uh, has to do with the vagina is giving birth so when a baby comes out it comes out through the vagina and the vagina is absolutely incredible it can stretch to actually get a little human out and then go back to size eventually um, a few weeks after birth like it's just super flexible organ <laughs> and one other thing I want to talk about with the vagina is that they have actually discovered that there is a vaginal microbiome what? So if you guys know anything about like the gut microbiome, they're actually starting to think that there is a separate uh, microbiome for the vagina. So maybe that might be the reason why so many women experience chronic yeast infections or even the reason for preterm birth. They're doing so much research on it. And as it keeps coming out, I'll keep updating you all because I think it is such good research and it's so interesting. Number two is the cervix. So the cervix is one that most people don't know. I didn't really know much about it till last year. There's still so much I have to learn about it. But as we are going up, you're going up the vagina and eventually you're going to hit this thing like a wall. If you were to insert your fingers into your vagina or say a tampon, if you pushed either of those up, you eventually feel like you're hitting a wall. You're thinking, what is that? That is your cervix. It is essentially this circular, firm, but smooth donut-like part of the body. <laughs> and it has this little hole in it. And the cervix actually um, connects the vagina to the uterus, which is pretty amazing. And essentially with the cervix, it is sometimes, um, sometimes the feel of it changes depending on where you are in your cycle. And even that little circle in it actually changes depending on where you are. So for example, that little circle can actually open and close. So typically when that, um, and when that little circle opens, you are either starting your period, which means your menstrual blood is flowing out of it. You are ovulating, which enables sperm to be able to swim up and attach to an egg if there's an egg available. And if a baby is coming out. So you know when you're watching those movies and they say, oh, she's 10 centimeters, she's five centimeters. They are talking about the little entryway into the cervix, that little bit that just feels like a little hole going in. That is where the, like, the baby is coming from. All right, number three, the uterus. So we have all heard of the uterus. Um, it's also referred to as the womb, and most of us know it as the place where a little human grows, where a little baby grows, which is entirely true. So the uterus is actually the size of a pear. So think of a pear. A pear actually isn't that big, and that pear in our pelvis area actually grows a little human. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, the uterus is a little, it's um, behind our pelvis, behind our bladder, and just up a little bit. If you're looking down at your stomach, look at where your mom's pubis is, and then just move it up a little bit towards your belly button. That's where your little uterus is. <laughs> and essentially, the thing with the uterus, it's an incredible organ. Uh, when we are starting our period, when you notice that menstrual blood coming out of your vagina, that is actually where that menstrual blood starts. So the uterus actually has three layers. We're not going to name them. <laughs> they have three layers. And that most inner layer, when we get to our period, that inner layer also has um, like this 
uh, layer that builds up throughout your menstrual cycle. And when you start your period, it starts shedding. So your uterus is actually contracting and it is shedding that lining out to get rid of it to start a new cycle. And that is what you were seeing as your period blood. All right, number four, this is the fallopian tube. So I'm gonna do a really horrible <laughs> demonstration, but okay, so imagine that my head is your uterus. So here is your vagina, here is your cervix, like this part's your cervix, this is your uterus, and then imagine you had two pink tails, that is those, these are your fallopian tubes. So your fallopian tubes, you have one on each side of the uterus and they um, basically connect the uterus to the ovaries. But I wanna make it clear that there are a lot of illustrations showing that the ovaries at the end, the little round balls at the end are connected to the fallopian tubes, they are not to the, um, Fallopian tube actually just hovers over those little ovaries, but it is connected to the uterus. I wanted to make that clear. And the cool thing about the fallopian tubes, they are basically just a passageway. So when the egg gets released into the um, fallopian tube, there's like these little tentacles that hold onto the egg so that if a sperm does manage to come in during the time that you were fertile, it will be able to fertilize that egg. Fallopian tube is where the egg sits. <laughs> All right, number five is the ovaries. And our ovaries are freaking our house. So essentially your ovaries are always communicating with your brain. We have a small gland in our brain called the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland controls our hormones and is constantly in communication with our ovaries to get them started. And so our ovaries, the main responsibility of the ovaries is to hold on to um, our egg supply and our future egg supply. And like I said, they're actually just attached to some connective tissue um, throughout that pelvic region that's it they just kind of hover under there but the cool thing about the ovaries is they've had eggs sitting in them since we were inside of our mother's womb that is how um, long like our egg and cellular development has been happening so when you start your period at say 12 years old and then you go through menopause at say 45 all of the eggs that you uh, produced or had the potentiality of producing throughout those years actually started when you were still developing in your mom's womb, which is crazy. It's so amazing. And yeah, so your ovaries um, have these little things called follicles and those, you have about 15 to 20 follicles that mature at a time. So that means that you have about 30 possible eggs every month that have the, have the possibility of being released. But your body is gonna pick the most viable egg to release into your fallopian tube. And that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this video is super helpful. I personally just think that the inside the women's group system is absolutely amazing. Yeah, thanks so much for visiting. I hope this video is really helpful and I hope the illustrations are too. If there's any questions, please feel free to contact me. Okay, so uh, feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to my channel and yeah, and follow me on Instagram at moonly.woman. I'm still working on my website, so I'll get to that when I get to it. Thanks so much for visiting guys and I will see you all next week. Bye.